Anger is one of those things that can prove very difficult to regulate. When you struggle with anger, it can feel like you have no control over your reactivity. But one of the main reasons this is the case is that most people do not understand anger and the role it serves. If we don't understand anger and the role it serves, we can never hope to do the right thing when our anger arises. In this video, I'm going to take you deeper into the truth of anger to expose a pattern that keeps a person angry no matter how hard they try at anger management. And I'm going to tell you how to crack this pattern. Anger is a protector for a vulnerable aspect of ourselves. It is indicative of an internal split that is developed when a person learns, usually in childhood, that the people around them are not moved by their pain or pleasure. The person who employs the self-protection strategy of anger can find no predictable way to endear themselves to the others in their environment so as to ensure their own safety and well-being. Often on a subconscious level, they have learned that either one or some or all of the people in their environment are adversaries. As a child, this person could not escape by withdrawing or running away. They also could not find an effective way to fawn. And so they learned that they have one option for self-preservation, and that's to fight. When a person has already learned over the course of their life that their pain, fear, and vulnerability will not be lovingly responded to, it makes no sense to show it to others, or even to allow themselves to be aware of it. So all that vulnerability, all that fear, all that perceived powerlessness, all that pain is hidden behind the anger, which comes in as a protector of that vulnerability. If you want to learn more about this, I want you to watch this video that I did that's titled The Link Between Anger and Vulnerability. But there is one main pattern that keeps a person stuck in anger no matter how much they work on their anger or the vulnerability below it. And that pattern is using anger as a form of self-loyalty. When we subconsciously see anger as a form of self-loyalty, we use anger as a way of enforcing our boundaries and best interests in a world that we are convinced doesn't care about our boundaries or our best interests at all. When we subconsciously see anger as a form of self-loyalty, we use anger to demonstrate firm allegiance to ourselves in a world that we perceive to be full of people we can't trust. This pattern forms in someone when they grow up in dysfunctional social systems, specifically ones that are riddled with betrayal, where the allegiance that is to be expected in a social system is either unpredictable or is not there at all. When a person has anger and self-loyalty linked, not getting angry feels like self-betrayal, and betrayal is such a deep trauma and wound for them that they would rather face any consequence that their anger invites than one, to be the one who betrays, or two, experience betrayal ever again, including, if not especially, at their own hand. They feel re-victimized by themselves when they don't get mad. On top of this, when a person has anger and self-loyalty linked, not getting angry makes it feel like the other person is just being let off the hook for whatever they did or are doing, and are getting a green light to keep hurting them. When a person has this pattern, they don't want to treat someone who harms them well, because doing so is like kissing the foot that kicked you, which feels deeply abusive and deeply disloyal to themselves. Usually a person with the anger self-loyalty pattern has also experienced betrayal trauma involving someone in their life being a bystander and or enabler of their harm. This is such a deep wound for them that they would rather face any consequence for their anger <laughs> than to be a bystander to someone harming them or worse, to enable someone to do so. If a person has this pattern, then working on their own anger actually feels self-abusive and like self-betrayal. Why? Because it feels like a form of scapegoating. <clears throat> it feels like the world is making them the problem for their anger rather than the other person slash people for whatever harm they are doing to cause the pain that is causing their anger to kick in. And so, working on their anger feels like they are agreeing to and going along with scapegoating themselves. To understand more about this, you can watch my video titled The Sickest Game You Can Play. The bottom line is, when anger is linked to self-loyalty, it feels like self-betrayal to not get mad and not fight and not insult and even to not be violent. And when faced with a lose-lose, which, let's face it, we tend to be faced with a lose-lose when it comes to getting angry or not getting angry. They will choose the consequences of getting angry. So how do we crack this pattern? 
One, we start with a huge dose of compassion by really acknowledging that if somebody has an anger self-loyalty link going on, they have been mistreated severely and by the very people who they should have been able to trust, the very people who should have been there for them. No matter how good their life may look on the outside, it is a gaslight. The deep reality of their life is that they have been alone, fending for themselves, without support and without allegiance, regardless of how many people may have been living with them, or be living with them, under the same roof. This means their world was and maybe still is not safe. It was and maybe still is dangerous. And all this is an indescribably painful experience that no being deserves to go through, and this mistreatment must be seen and acknowledged. Not made okay, explained away, minimized, justified, or denied. Two, the pain underneath the anger must be recognized, seen, heard, felt, and attended to. Anger covers and protects vulnerability, and all the strategies in the world that address a person's anger issues at the level of their anger will fail. When you notice anger kick in, and it kicks in really fast, you have to slow way down and attend to the vulnerability and the pain and the fear and the perceived powerlessness that is underneath it. Essentially, what the anger is trying to protect. You need to caretake it. Find a direct way to resolve the fear, pain, powerlessness, and vulnerability. This is, in fact, much more self-loyal to do than fighting back when you are caused pain because it doesn't come with those terrible consequences to yourself that your anger usually does. You can think of this like immediately attending to a child when it starts crying to figure out exactly what is happening with the child and what it needs, and then taking conscious action accordingly. What if attending to your pain that is underneath your anger was your new way of being loyal to yourself? Three, change your perception so as to weaken that link that you formed between anger and self-loyalty. Protect the parts within a person's consciousness that employ the strategy of anger and fighting usually fall under the category of self-saboteur, essentially a part of you that protects you in one way while damaging you in another way. Again, they operate within the context of a lose-lose. To understand more about this, you can watch my video titled There is No Such Thing as Self-Sabotage. Because they harm you in one way, the reality is that they are being loyal in one way and disloyal in another, because they are acting in your best interest in one way while acting against your best interest in another. For example, it may prevent a coworker from taking advantage of you, but it may get you fired. Four, realize that there are plenty of other strategies to demonstrate self-loyalty and come up with a more effective direct way of being loyal to yourself in whatever situation causes anger to arise within you. Getting angry at someone as a display of self-defense is only one way of demonstrating loyalty to yourself, and often, especially in a society that will turn your anger against you, unfortunately, at this point in time, it is not a very effective way to be self-loyal. To give you just some examples of ways that you could be loyal to yourself, you could commit to saying no in a situation and not change your mind. You could take time for yourself to really be present with your feelings and thoughts so as to identify personal truths regarding what you really want and what is really a yes and really a no for you. You could seek someone else to protect and defend you. You could resolve a split within yourself between a part that keeps acting in alignment with what you want and a part of you that you feel is acting against what you want. You could identify what need is unmet and directly meet that need wherever it can best be met. You could practice integrity in a situation. You could impose a specific consequence for something that somebody does rather than to just get angry. You could become what you wish to see in the world or experience in the world. You could choose what is right for you and act on that rather than to self-sacrifice. You could find a way to empower yourself about something that you feel powerless about. You could write a letter to someone about, say, their unworkability in a situation and make them aware of the powerless position that they have put you in. You could honor a gut feeling that you have. You could hire a therapist to help you stay in alignment with yourself and be loyal to yourself. You could be honest in a situation where you might normally not be. And the list goes on and on. Being loyal to yourself is really about identifying what is really and truly in your best interests in any given situation and acting on it. The most effective way to be loyal to yourself in a given situation will be different depending on the situation itself. For example, 
let's say that you were swept downstream in a river. Swimming yourself to shore is a much more effective way of demonstrating self-loyalty than, say, closing your eyes and being present with how it feels emotionally for you that you are being swept downstream right now. <laughs> so part of that slowing down and attending to the vulnerability, the pain, the fear, and the perceived powerlessness underneath your anger is to be able to identify, given the exact nature of the upset, what the most effective demonstration of self-loyalty is. If you have self-loyalty and anger linked, you are in sore need of the experience of loyalty and self-loyalty. So you need to consciously do this and directly do this in each situation where you feel your anger arise and ask yourself, what is the best and most effective way to be loyal to myself in this situation? Remember, directly practicing self-loyalty is a practice. You will get better at it over time, and in turn, your reactivity will diminish. Now, I'll give you an example of this. Jaden grew up in a family home where his father was physically and emotionally abusive. Sometimes his father would take him out to do carpentry with him or to play baseball, but just like that, he would flip on a dime and scold Jaden or hit him. By the time that Jaden was a teen, their relationship had turned into a full-on rivalry. Jaden became the family scapegoat. Jaden's father would tell you that he loves his son, but the reality is that Jaden felt like he was living with a father he could not trust. But he couldn't trust his mother either. She was afraid of her husband and would not step in to protect Jaden. Instead, she would cry and cry about why Jaden couldn't just do what it took to not make his father angry. Jaden remembers her putting raw meat on his black eye when his father beat him. Rather than standing up to the beating, or calling a male family member in, or calling the police. Anyone. So he couldn't trust his mother either. She was concerned with her own well-being, and she felt she couldn't survive on her own without her husband. So she chose that she would please him instead, even at the expense of her own son. Jaden also did not grow up in a safe and supportive community. His world was pretty dog-eat-dog, -dog, to be honest. And now he has a massive anger problem. He gets angry at the drop of a hat and feels like he can't control his rage. He has been ordered by the court to do anger management courses before, but no amount of breathing or counting or exercising seems to do a thing. Jaden makes the huge realization that his anger is trying to protect him, like a defensive friend living inside of him, and that under that anger is fear and pain. All the things he was not allowed to even acknowledge in a culture where he was expected to be so tough and so strong. He also realizes that the reason that trying to work on his anger has been so ineffective is that it feels like self-betrayal to work on his anger at all. And it feels like self-betrayal to not get angry. But Jaden is sick of feeling so out of control of himself emotionally, and he is also sick of the consequences that his anger keeps having on his relationships. And he doesn't want to be anything like his father, um, who also had no control over his anger. So he decides to try something else. One day, Jaden is working on an oil rig, and a co-worker of his makes a mistake that almost gets Jaden's fingers ripped off. This is a situation where Jaden would normally fly off the handle and yell at him and throw things at him and even get violent. Instead, Jaden recognizes the gunshot of fury that he feels as his protector getting activated. He decides to figure out what is underneath the protector. He wants to know what vulnerability and fear and pain got activated by the situation. So almost immediately, he decides to tell the guys that he needs to take a break and he walks away to go sit in his truck. He closes his eyes and puts all his attention on the fire-like fury inside his chest and neck. But he starts asking internally, what are you protecting? What are you hiding? Right? And pretty soon, a desperate feeling brings tears to his eyes, like he's about to cry. He keeps his attention on the feeling of being desperate. And he starts to have realizations and images arise. Realizations like the fact that he is terrified of people because they don't seem to care about their impact on each other. That their lack of care about impact can ruin someone else's life, and there is nothing that you can do about it after it's too late. And he sees images of his grandmother's trailer, which she lost because some rich guy bought the trailer park and upped the prices. 
making it so that she had to move in with Jaden's aunt, who was a cruel woman. Jaden loved his grandmother and is convinced that that was the main reason she got ill and died. Jaden realized that the vulnerability that was activated was the feeling that he was in danger because no one seems to perceive or care about their impact on each other. He spends time really focusing all of his attention on this highly scary and painful feeling. Jaden remembers that he wants to demonstrate loyalty to himself, and he acknowledges that his usual way of being loyal to himself would be to get furious at his coworker in order to discourage him from ever not considering his impact on Jaden again. But Jaden can see that this strategy is not very effective because it usually makes the other person perceive him as an adversary and strike back in little ways later whenever they get the opportunity to go against him. He can see that this intimidation strategy only makes it so that he has to watch his back all the time later. So Jaden starts to think of a different strategy where he can be loyal to himself. Jaden realizes that he was already loyal to himself by attending to his own fear and his pain, which was something that his own parents never did in their consistent display of disloyalty. And he decides that the most effective strategy to demonstrate self-loyalty in this situation is to assert to the group he works with how important consideration of impact is in general, and especially is to him. So what does Jaden do? He decides to do something totally radical and scary. He asks the other guys on his team to take a break with him. During that break, rather than chew his coworker out, he decides to tell them all a story about his childhood and his life and how it always felt like no one cares about their impact on anyone else and how scary and lonely it is to live in a world like that. He tells them that when he comes to work, this is the fear he has. That, quote, any one of us could drop the ball and relax and get each other hurt or even killed. And he tells them that he wants to come to work and for them to come to work and really be able to trust that they have each other's back. Jaden proposes that if any man feels like he might be a liability for any reason, that that man should bring it up and that they should decide what to do about it together rather than any one of them having to take a risk, especially when it's not a risk that they've decided to take. The other men were shocked to silence by this sudden vulnerable expression. After all, they're not too comfortable with vulnerability either, and that's exactly what he awoke in them. But they actually responded well. Jaden was able to awaken within them a very masculine need for brotherhood and camaraderie, even though the colleague that nearly got him injured was unable to apologize. Jaden could tell that he felt guilt and was far more careful after the talk. Jaden decided that he was going to teach this colleague how to be considerate by example, and specifically by being considerate about him. Later in the day, Jaden even took the opportunity to demonstrate what that looks like by protecting this colleague from a group decision that would have left him without a ride home. Jaden decided that his way of being loyal to himself was to lead the men around him into the practice of consideration of impact and the practice of taking care to not negatively impact each other. Jaden also promised himself that if nothing changed regarding the behavior that he kept seeing in these men acting lackadaisical around the heavy equipment, he would escalate the issue to his boss and even quit his job if he has to. Luckily, this did not occur. Instead, because the men felt so considered and taken under Jaden's wing, is just how they put it, due to this new conduct at work, they all fought back when their boss decided to transfer Jaden to another oil rig that they had just started. Because of the sudden display of loyalty, the boss realized he had a leader on his hands and instead gave Jaden a surprise promotion. Anger is a powerful protector that is trying its very best to defend your best interest in a world that it feels is void of caring consideration and loyalty. And because of the collateral damage it creates, it is an inverted advocate. But like all protector parts of the consciousness, if you show it a more effective way of achieving its loyalty aims, it will let go of its old strategies and adopt these new strategies. And it all begins with this. Me getting angry at the ways I am being mistreated is not the problem. But maybe there are better, more effective, and more direct ways of demonstrating loyalty to myself than getting angry. Have a good week.